What is up guys, Mac Speed coming at ya. Very special episode today. First time getting the hats on Invader and quarter bore 25 caliber out to the range. As you guys can see, it still has that iron sight carry handle that comes from the hats on factory installed on it. And I have no confidence in my ability to use the iron sights. As you guys may be familiar, if you're a fan of the channel and subscribed, these Coke bottles have to be on my face for me to legally drive a car. So that's an idea of how bad my vision actually is. I do want to go ahead and get through the boring part of this video as far as the crony end of it and the sight end of it. And then maybe we'll go ahead and put some glass on this thing and see exactly how far we can reach out with this semi-automatic monster. We're all the way filled up on the pressure charge right now and I know from personal experience 25 caliber Hatsons just love 25 caliber Hornets. Even though it's an expensive round, even though it hurts my heart to squeeze the trigger at the cost per shot, it's still worth it to get that solid sight in that a good quality round like the H&N Hornet can garner. Let's get right into this. I will say this, comparatively to the Blitz, indexing the magazine is much more intuitive and smooth. I feel like I want to adjust my crony for you guys. The number one thing I want to do, even though it's boring to me, is give you guys that good data. So let's go ahead and get all lined up before we even take a shot. That looks good. Really good. Wow, not much adjustment necessary. 818 on velocity. Oh, did you hear on the last squeeze of the trigger after it went dry? I would almost be willing to bet that the next time that I put a round into this rifle, it will not fire because the sear has been released, the same as we found in the 22 caliber testing. That means that you're probably going to have to re-rack this bolt to get fire out of it. You know, honestly, I've heard that sound before and I know I'm gonna have to do it. Let's just go ahead and re-rack her before we get into the next group. The next ammunition online is the polymags, but I do wanna keep this a very consistent test and top the rifle up with the pony bottle that I did bring with me. To be perfectly honest, as quickly as I was squeezing those rounds off, the fact that I can cover the entire group with an American Quarter, absolutely astounding. Even though it's only 10 yards, iron sights, I'm blind, crazy good accuracy. All right, so I guess only just now you guys get to have some audio because I did forget to go ahead and turn the mic on on that one. Hopefully the internal microphone on the 360 camera has segued us to this point and we can go ahead and continue our group without any problems. Nice. Nice, and it looks like my pony tank is just about 3,000 PSI, so if we wanted to, we actually could keep this really consistent by tethering this bottle. I think I'm going to go ahead and do that, guys. Let's, let's get this valve all the way open. All right, we're all lined up, loaded up. Let's see exactly what happens with these polymags at the exact same distance at 10 yards in the quarter bore invader. Seven, seven, zero velocity. That's all the rounds in the magazine, and I feel like that was really consistent once again. Ah, good stuff, good stuff. I like it when things work. Honestly, it's such a refreshing feeling after having so many different segments in the last few months go so sour on me to have something just work right out of the box, guys. I know that we're kind of cheating a little bit by having the bottle be tethered, but keeping that consistent pressure truly shows the capabilities of the rifle, not necessarily the declining value of the shot string. Honestly, with as well as we're doing with these iron sights, guys, let's just go ahead and continue to push the distance out, replace the targets, and see what happens.
All right, guys, we're making the migration out here to 25 yards. And so far, I'm very, very, very happy with the invader as far as how it's performing for us. Let's go ahead and see how we can do with this distance, guys. Just by initial visual comparison, I do think that the uh, Hornets worked better for us in that test. Let's get a couple of magazines loaded up of the h and Hornets and then compare them to another ammunition that I think you guys are going to love. All right, gentlemen, once again, we did go ahead and push all the way out to the 30 yard distance at this point because I am feeling confident. We've got our h and Hornets loaded up 100% and we are ready to see what we do on that left hand target. Although once again, for you guys, it's probably the right hand side because I flipped the image on you. Honestly, we're going to need to go inspect the target because my old eyes have no ability to see that far. Realistically, it looks like we just need to come down a few clicks and we'll be doing all right. Just be generous. Get another mag going. All right, let's go ahead and get into our second try at 30 yards with the H&N Hornets. Still left-hand target, but for you guys, probably the right. I see some yellow roughly towards the center. I'm a happy guy, that's all I can ask for, that's all I can ask for. If you can't see what you're aiming at, typically you're not gonna hit it, so I have to just rely on the fundamentals, put that golf tee post right in the center of the target and adjust as necessary. Let's get into a really special type of ammunition that I think you guys are really gonna like seeing tested. Online for the next group, guys, we have the 36 grain Griffin Slugs CP-based hollow point slug. Ah could not be more excited to see if the invader indeed is capable of being a slug gun, right? Everybody wants to shoot slugs. So today we're gonna go ahead and see if these 36 grain Griffin CPs do any type of decent at the 30 yard range. Guys, let's get into it. I truly have no idea. I'm just gonna continue and then take the walk. And that's it. 621 was the last number that I saw recorded on the crony. I'm actually not that disappointed. Comparatively, tighter with the Hornets. But this shows promise comparatively to other guns that I've tested slugs in. God, now I really want to get an optic on this. All right, guys, we got a couple of magazines of Hornets left. We got another magazine of slugs set up and we got fresh targets out there with a scope now mounted. Let's see if we can't walk this beast in. 
go ahead and starting with the left hand target but once again i flip images so it's probably right hand for you guys There's no way it's the same sight in between my Blitz and my Invader. There's no way. You can see the trees behind me, boys. The wind has definitely picked up a little bit, but I think it adds validity to this test by giving us a real world situation. feel that right to left push right now. It's like a wall of air slapping the side of the gun right now. There goes the sear. <sighs> Honestly, that's one thing I feel like they should fix about the Invader is the fact that you shouldn't be able to pull the trigger and release the sear once the mag has gone dry. You can't with the blitz. I'm gonna go ahead and give it a second magazine of Hornets, but this time pick up the pace and see if we truly are on target the way we think we are. I've made no adjustments to the dial, so I'm kind of incredulous here. Top right, diamond. That was an even better group than the first one. There's no way. Moving on to the final group of the day, guys. The 36 grain CP, the 36 grain CP tip dish base from Griffin. All right, guys, as maddening as it is to have that sear release every time I run out of rounds in the magazine, I can't tell you how excited I am to finally see a budget PCP that's 